Hey boys and girls, Ken Smith, KenSmithFishing.com. Welcome to Richardson, Texas, uh, our home up here in the north part of Texas where we're enjoying the uh, the crickets and the mosquitoes tonight. Uh, this is going to be our last, this will be our ninth of nine videos of our Albert and Glenn series. Uh, and that would be uh, Albert Collins and Glenn Freeman uh, structure fishing on Sam Rayburn. And I didn't know how much footage I had as I worked through these, so I basically used up all, but just a tiny bit of footage that I'm going to share with you here in just a minute. But I thought, um, i tell you what, let's do that first. So, uh, late in the day, uh, I turned off the camera, and you'll actually notice I've picked up a rod now because we've decided we've answered all the questions we were going to get. And, uh, of course, as soon as that happens, uh, Glenn pops a good fish. So, let's watch that real quick. Well, I turned the camera off, and... Glenn pokes one. Nice fish. And and I think he said earlier maybe I should be throwing a jig in the summertime. There you go, that's proof right there. Boy, he just right right between eyes. That's, that's solid three and three quarter, maybe four. Mm -hmm. Close to four. Dandy. Felt good. Back down where he goes. Well he was out here deep, deep. This was almost right under us. Well, as y'all can see, it has gotten really, really slick. And we are beginning to perspire. So, we'll film a little more as we fish. But I think we answered everybody's questions. Thank you, Glenn, for coming all the way over here from Toledo Bend. And Albert from driving in from Nacogdoches. Guys, if you have more questions for these guys that come out of this, post them in the comments down below the video or on Facebook and I'll make sure and ask them and uh, and we'll get them answered for you uh, in here pretty quickly we'll probably get back out and do this again if we get a bunch of good questions or fishing gets a little better for us or just getting out to have a little fun together I've really enjoyed it and I think these guys who had never fished together before probably enjoyed it as well so uh, thanks again guys and uh, Glenn, if somebody wants to take you for a guide trip, you taking guide trips these days? I am. I am. They can. I'm listed in the Zawali area, Glenn Freeman, so they can call me. Or, or they know me down at Toledo Town, places like that. So. Okay. Not that hard to find. No. Uh, All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you don't, please subscribe. My picture over there on the uh, on the right, the little circle. You click on that, it'll give you the chance to subscribe. This has probably been several shows. So if you just caught the tail end of this, there's more shows in front of this because we got a lot of really good footage, a lot of really good information in this show. And uh, we will be back down here again in a week or two and get some more footage. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Not that there was any competition here, but who caught the most fish today up there? Well, it depends. Are you counting goo? <laughs> Albert. <laughs> Albert has then I picked up the... the goo. I think counting the goo, we're tied. Yeah, but he said every time you catch a goo, you take one off of your bass count. That's a deduction. Okay, so um, that, that's really all the footage that we got. Uh, but I thought I'd talk about a couple other things. And, and the first thing I want to talk about is, is kind of what I learned in spending the day with the two guys. Um, I had never been in the boat with either of them before. Uh, Albert and I have been pretty good friends for several years, but we never fished together, which is typical. You know, if you're not a team partner, you don't fish together. Um, what I learned more than anything else is you just simply can't beat hard work. Uh, both those guys put a ton of time on the water. It actually made me feel better that we didn't catch fish, as silly as that sounds. But to know, and, and by the way, interestingly, I had some guys comment to me that, oh, y'all were down the lake, you know, trying to misdirect guys off the north end. Uh, I have seen Albert since then down in that same area still trying to find offshore fish. So there was no goofing around here. They're, they're still, you know, the north end's now gotten crowded. I don't think Albert made the comment in this video, but uh, he's made the comment to me that, you know, he used to have a milk run of seven to 12 or 14 spots that he could run up there and catch a good fish or two off each one and he said he can run nine spots now and he might only get to fish one of them because there's somebody on all of them because that part of the lake gets so much more pressure than it used to uh, i remember many many years ago 
uh, Medcalf making a comment about he was fishing back down south, and I saw him quite a bit down around Frontier, because uh, once the once Toledo got marked, where everybody knew how to get up to the front top. Because remember, at one time there were no boat lanes on Toledo Bend. Uh, if you ran to the north end of Toledo Bend, you were running by the seat of your pants, or you knew absolutely what you were doing. And I remember Mike making a comment that he was fishing back down south because there were so many people on the north end fishing the stuff that he'd fished for years and years. Um, other things I learned, uh, I learned the 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 uh, the wing ding and the uh, and the spoon. I knew Albert fished a spoon a lot. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to him on the phone while he's practicing, and it's like, "What are you doing?" Well, I'm dropping a spoon. Uh, that's that's something they do a lot, and and you know we're marking a lot more um, offshore drum than we ever have before at Rayburn. There was a time I think when you mark fish hugging the bottom out there, you figure they were either a bass or a catfish, and usually you had a pretty good size variance between the two. Uh, drum and bass look a whole lot alike and set up on, on bottom structure a whole lot alike. Crappie typically stack, bass typically get on the bottom. And um, that was something really interesting to me is how he quickly evaluates what's down there with that spoon and that Glenn admitted to us that that's something else he does. Uh, it's interesting, this video was all shot before the Forced Wood Cup Championship and the Force Wood Cup Championship subsequently gets won on that 12-inch uh, Mr. Twister worm. So uh, that's obviously no fluky deal either. That's something these guys are catching a lot of big fish on. Uh, something I've been throwing more, and i got to tell you, I don't have confidence in it yet. I've been throwing it quite a bit. I, the only confidence I have, I've caught a few fish on it, is the confidence I see in them because I know they're not throwing it to, 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 you know, to say, oh, look at Mr. Twister. They're throwing it because they get bit on it, which is something else I like about both these guys. They're not wearing a bunch of patches and running rap boats of stuff that they don't fish. Uh, their sponsors are their sponsors because it's stuff they believe in, whether it's the rods and reels or the line or the baits or whatever. Uh, they're using stuff that they use to make their living. Uh, so it's, you know, there, there's no BSing going on around that. Um, but again, what I learned was just hard work and time on the water. You don't go out, you know, Albert made the comment that if he found two good spots in a year or Glenn did one, they would be really happy with that. That kind of blew my socks up off a little bit and actually made me feel better about the days I go out and don't catch anything. Uh, that I, you know, especially on the days when I'm going out and looking for new stuff, which I do quite a bit. Uh, I've got spots on Rayburn, I know I can go catch them, but I want new stuff, so I'm constantly looking for that new stuff. So that was, uh, that was real interesting to me as well. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this series of videos. I've got a, a fellow in San Antonio, I actually got a couple of fellows trying to help me figure out how to get a better uh, camera. A friend who I think probably sent me some mics here. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some better setups to do some more of these. I've got a couple of good ideas of videos I want to do that I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, structure fishing, grass fishing, uh, nest fishing some interesting stuff and, and luckily uh, I've got uh, good fishermen that are friends that are willing to share some of their information with us. Um, I, I've gotten really good feedback not just from you guys you know my, the guys who are watching the videos and girls who are watching the videos with me but from my buddies. Now I've gotten a little bit of hard time from some about the Rayburn reports but um, in general uh, they're like wow you know this is good stuff and let's you know I'm, I'm fine sharing my stuff so uh, it's, it's been a real enjoyable, uh, roughly about seven months, eight months I've been doing this now. Um, so uh, I hope you guys will continue tuning in and continue sharing with your friends. Uh, for the rest of the year, I'm going to work on my map tips. We'll be at Rayburn off and on, so we'll get some more Rayburn videos up. Uh, and then I'm going to go up to Lake of the Ozarks for the regional. I did qualify for the regional from the BFL. If you haven't seen those videos, I posted those from Toledo here a couple of weeks ago. Now I'm saying a couple of weeks ago by the way it's October of 2016 or t October of 2018 excuse me so if you're watching these out in the future that's when all this stuff got posted. A couple other things I want to talk about so um, you guys have seen Bodie and Sel in the boat with me um, there is now a third dog so we have rescued from down at Sam Rayburn a little border collie who is absolutely precious who we had no intent of being a three dog family. By the way, her name is Sammy, and it's Sammy Ray, Sam Rayburn, Sammy Ray. She's beautiful. You guys will start seeing her on videos pretty soon, assuming she likes to ride in the boat. 
Didn't have any intent on being a three dog family, but she's about a year old and Stella's about 15, 18 months old. And Stella's absolutely in love with her and she's in love with Stella. So we don't have the heart to break them up. So we're a three dog family. So you all start seeing true chaos in the boat pretty soon. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is the new Bass Pro Tour. And I don't, I don't mean to make anybody angry about this. This is just my opinion on this deal. But um, number one, I've always had a problem with some of the tournament circuits, frankly, most of the tournament circuits, that I don't think understand who their customers are. Um, I would love to know for every dollar that BASS or FLW or any one of our regional circuits take in, I know they all say we're 90, 95% payout, but that doesn't include the membership fees, the money they get from the city, the chambers of commerce, which is all, you know, the, the taxes that get paid in to draw tournaments to those cities. Of course, their sponsors, if you look at any one of these tournament trails, uh, if they have a trailer, it's covered in sponsors. If they're on TV, they've obviously got people buying commercials and, and all those sponsorships. Um, my guess has been, and it is absolutely a guess, that even a, even a fishing circuit that pays out 100% on their tournaments are probably only paying out maybe 40 cents, maybe 30 cents, maybe 20 cents on the dollar for their revenue coming in. Now don't get me wrong, I have no problems with somebody making a living with the family that owns FLW or BASS or who, I don't even know who owns what. I have no problem with those people making a living. That's their right. I gotta make a living selling insurance. but. I think at times they lose sight of, um, of who their customers are. I have experienced this personally. Uh, one, of the, one of the circuits here close by, we don't fish all their tournaments because um, for multiple years now they've taken, well, it's Bass Champs. So multiple years now Bass Champs has taken, uh, and, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but they've taken their championships to places I don't enjoy fishing. And um, you know, what FLW did to us, taking us to Kentucky Lake, which by the way is 10 miles from their home offices, and to go up there and spend six days and get three or four bass bites in six days. The guy that won the Costa, excuse me, the guy that led the Costa Championship after two days, zero the third day. And what, what I have always said to tournament circuits is, especially those that want us to spend a lot of money and travel, I am not a professional fisherman. I do this for fun. Do I want to make money? Absolutely I want to make money doing it. But I'm doing it for fun. I'm taking vacation time away from work. Vacation time to me is not go somewhere and the fishing sucks. And that's what's happened. I'm hearing this year, I didn't fish the Fort Gibson tournament. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm glad I said that. By the way, congratulations to Tommy Dickerson of Orange, Texas, who won, uh, that's his third FLW win. I know he was disappointed in his first year on the tour this year, he didn't have a great year. He redeemed himself beautifully going up there and beating a 70% Oklahoma field, I think, uh, at uh, Fort Gibson, so great job, Tommy. Also, congratulations. To Kyle Cordiana. Kyle and I have gotten to know each other a little bit fishing the Costas and he's got a good uh, YouTube channel as well if you've not checked him out. They actually tied and Tommy won on the tiebreaker which, which was the higher place going into the final day. So congratulations to both you guys. Good luck to both of you over at Gunnersville. But I have personally no desire as I started to say which reminded me of that. Number one, Fort Gibson. You put only a hundred boats, but they were trying to get a full fill, 200 boats, on 20,000 acres of a place where the first day out of over 200 anglers there were five limits caught. Guys, that's no fun. Why do I want to go put myself through that and come home just, you know, off that I went up there and spent six or seven days and didn't catch any dadgum fish? Send me to Falcon. Send me to Rayburn. Send me to Toledo. There's great lakes all over the place. Crap, let's go to Ufala in Oklahoma. Great fishing there. I don't get the tournament circuits. Don't get that we're their customers. Um, I have no interest in driving 11 hours to fish Gunnersville. That's just my personal choice, but that's why I didn't fish the last Costa. When tournament circuits figure out 
that I am their customer, the guy who pays their entry fees, then it'll get better. And I'm going to pick on FLW again. You guys put the first tournament next year of the Costa on Amstead, and you did it so that I'm away from home on New Year's Eve. Does that make my wife happy? Does that make her want me to be a tournament bass fisherman? I promise you, it does not. Why don't we just start putting them on Mother's Day? Okay, that's another rant. So, anyway, I think what happened here was a bunch of the BASS guys felt like BAS didn't treat them like their customer anymore. And I understand that. Now, I will also say I don't think, I don't understand why the Bass Pro Tour did what they did in giving these guys basically a two week window to make this decision. So I've been in professional sales in the insurance business working with high net worth families for 30 years. And what I have seen over those 30 years is many, many, many sales approaches where whoever's promoting that product says the IRS is about to close this one day, you got 60 days to do this, or you got to do this by the end of the year. And anytime I have seen something like that with a deadline, it's been a form of scam of one kind or another. Now, I do not believe the Bass Pro Tour is a scam of any kind. But why did you only give those guys two weeks to make a decision? If you haven't seen it yet, there's a good video with Zona, who also has a very good page, a very, very good page, um, where Zona has Chris Zaldane in the boat, and they're talking to Zaldane about his decision process and also, also about Seth Fighter. I hope I'm saying that name right. Both those guys got invited, and both of them said no. And I think Seth's the one, Seth is the one who said, they just didn't give me enough time. They should have given me more time to consider my options, to talk to my sponsors, to make sure they were okay with me doing this. It just seemed really, really rushed to me. And that says to me either, and again, I'm, I may make some guys mad, but that says to me either, we want you to make a snap decision, us or them, or we didn't have our ducks in a row early enough to give you a proper window of time to make this decision. I completely respect everybody who decided to jump over and fish the Bass Pro Tour, and I equally respect everybody who decided to stay at BASS or FLW and fish what they're fishing. What I hope this does for the industry is, I hope it wakes up both of these tours um, to understand that the people you should take care of first are the people who are paying your entry fees. I have spent a bunch of money over the last 20 years in entry fees and tournaments. By the way, so let me just go on record. I fished my first bass tournament in 1977. I am not new to this game. I have fished the Bassmaster Invitationals. I have fished the Costas. I've fished the Redmans. I've fished the BFLs. i fished the ABA. I have fished every team circuit in Texas. I have fished everything around here. The only thing I've not fished is the Elite or the FLW Tour. So, and Sammy says hi if y'all heard her right there. That's my, my opinion on it. Um, I, I think had I been an Elite Series guy, unless I had been one of the guys in the know or been one of the guys that started that circuit, it had been really hard for me to make that jump. Um, you're, you're going from, a, um, from trying to catch your five best fish uh, to trying to catch a whole bunch of one-pounders. And although that makes a little bit of entertaining TV to me, the most entertaining thing to me about the BPT, or, or actually about Major League Fishing, is how much those guys are worried about what everybody else is doing. That just blows my mind. I, I so don't pay attention to that when I'm on the water, but obviously those guys do. Um, I think that's pretty hysterical. But truthfully, on um, those tournaments where they go and they, you know, where it takes 41-pound fish to win one, I. I don't watch those. I just fast forward through them to see who won. Man, actually, I really, a lot of times I don't even care who won. So um, maybe they beef that circuit up. I hate that they're taking away the weigh-ins. I think the weigh-ins are a lot of our circuit. I think Rick Klein talked about that as well. Um, but, um, you know, we are in a, a world of people wanting, uh, and not just young people, I, you know, I'd like to blame this on the young people, they want all their news and all their shows and little short snippets, but I'm as guilty of it as anybody now. I mean, I will, uh, I read the New York Times on my phone, and a lot of times I'll scan the first three paragraphs and I move on, so 
uh, we've all we've all all of our attention spans have shortened, which probably means you're no longer watching this since I've talked as long as I have. But I, I guess that's maybe why that tour has done so well on TV. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how all this shakes out. Uh, I find it hard to believe that there will be three major bass tours in three or five years. Bass being FLWBBT or Bass BASS. Uh, but I also am not ready to say who's going to be at the top of that heat. Um, originally, I really thought that BASS would populate the Elite Series next year with guys uh, that didn't qualify and allowing guys to jump over from the FLW Tour. It doesn't sound like they're going to do that. I think I, I have heard a rumor or maybe I read they said they're fine not having full fields next year. But this is certainly shaking up the industry. Um, I'm, and I, again, I hope it makes uh, you guys who, I don't, know, I don't know how many people run tournament circuits watch my videos, but maybe it'll get shared with them. Treat me as your customer. Don't have me away from home on New Year's Eve practicing. Um, and that's just, you know, two days or three days before the tournament. Uh, don't take me to places where the fishing stinks. Um, I have no interest in, sorry guys down in Orange, but I have no interest in coming to the Sabine River. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm sure if you know what you're doing down there, the fishing's good. All I hear about is bad fishing and tearing up your boat. Um, uh, I will never go back to Kentucky Lake unless I qualify for the FLW Cup or the Bassmaster, you know, uh, Classic, and it's there. I, I will never go back. The fishing's no fun. It's too far and it's no fun. Same for the Ohio River. There's so many good lakes across the country. Quit paying attention to who's paying you. Uh, that is communities or you know cities or municipalities to bring your tournament circuit there pay attention to the guys who pay our entry fees and take time away from our regular jobs and uh, and work and uh, come and fish your circuits and, and let us enjoy our time away from work uh, even I don't mind you know what I would much rather go to, uh, to uh, Falcon but you know great story uh, Dickie and I went to Falcon for the Bass Champs Championship last time it was down there after two days, we had 10 fish that weighed 61 pounds. And as we drove away from the lake, he looked at me, six pound average. He looked at me and he said, do you think we got a check? And I said, not a chance. 95 pounds was winning it. About an hour later, we got the text message, we got the last place check of 61 pounds. But you know what? We got a ball. That's, that's all we want to do. We, yeah, we want to be competitive, but we had more fun down there competing than we did when we got sixth place in the, in the, in the, Bass, in the uh, Bass Champs Championship on the Red River. That was way more fun down there than over there. So, anyway. All right. I'll shut up now. Uh, so, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, love to hear your comments below about, these, uh, about the tours that are upcoming and what's going to happen in our... Uh, our little corner of the world of bass fishing, tournament bass fishing, it will almost certainly be entertaining, and uh, you know, hopefully, it helps those guys up there make a living better because I think that's deserved. I really don't think there's a whole bunch of guys fishing these tours that are making a really good living, and they should. I mean, that's they, it's their chosen occupation, and there's plenty of money in the business. So, hopefully, to help more of those guys make a living going forward, and uh, maybe that'll trickle down to all the rest of us. So, thanks for tuning in. Oh, one more thing. Got a little bit of a Rayburn report for you. So, uh, media championship was down there this weekend. Uh, and there was also the uh, Keith Combs deal. Uh, I know there are a ton of fish, a ton of fish getting caught shallow. Uh, some friends of mine were down staying at our place this weekend. And I think they said they probably had 35 keepers Saturday. All shallow fish around the grass, throwing lots of different baits. But I'll also tell you that I had a buddy work in the tub at the Keith Combs and another buddy who watched the tub, uh, the fish tub, at the, um, at the, um, look at here, here's Sammy. Come here, Sammy, meet everybody. Everybody meet Sammy. Uh, um, oh, and Stella says hi, too. So uh, we have, uh, I know the guys that were working the tub down there, pretty much all the big fish that got weighed, a, a big majority of them got fizzed which tells you they're coming from deep. So uh, it sounds like Rayburn's getting fun again where you can catch them kind of at every depth uh, as usual to win. You probably got to be out there deep somewhere. But uh, I think if you want to come fishing and have some fun, it's time, to, uh, it's time to load up a boat and come down to the number one bass lake in the country 
and that is, by the way, in case you didn't know it, our Sam Rayburn right here in Zabala, Texas, or right there in Zabala, Texas, we're in Richardson tonight. So, hope you guys uh, stayed tuned there. I know that was a lot of talk about a lot of different stuff, but um, thanks for uh, thanks for watching our Glenn and, and Albert series, and we're going to work on some more map tips and some more Rayburn tips coming up for you over the next several weeks, and we're going to keep doing these videos as long as you guys keep uh, giving me good feedback and enjoying them and sharing them. So, uh, until next week, uh, you guys. Stay safe, have fun, and uh, if you see me on the water, give me a wave and let's chat.